So the word defibrillator for today, where we're trusting God for a word from within the word. John 15, now we're doing the amplified version, the classic edition. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Any branch in me that does not bear fruit, that stops bearing, he cuts away, trims off, takes away, and he cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. So that's an amazing picture. If you look at a vine, Jesus is that life source. The Father is the one that tends to his Son. The Father is the one that lovingly prunes him and all those who are in him to produce even more and more fruit. What a beautiful picture. You are cleansed and pruned already because of the world which I have given you, the teachings I have discussed with you. Dwell in me and I will dwell in you. Live in me and I will live in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit of itself without abiding in being virtually united to the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in him bears much abundant fruit. However, apart from me, cut off from vital union with me, there's your answer. You can do nothing. Nothing. I have phone calls where it comes towards the end of the month where people are in business or coming to the end of the month where uh, salary is important. And they say, Sean, I just give up. I can't do this anymore. Why do I go around the same bush over and over again? It happens every month. I pick it up. I try and make it work. Then I give it up and God delivers. So it's not in the finances coming or not. It's the fact that they just keep on taking it away, disconnecting themselves from the vine. It's like this crazy mindset that we go to the vine, get what we want when we're really desperate, and then we disconnect to kind of go do our own thing. And which is common. What son or daughter of a house doesn't leave their home and then go start their own thing and kind of grow? And that's what C's are for, aren't they? They kind of detach themselves from the fruit and then they grow another bush and more fruit. Not in this case. Jesus is saying, nothing you can do unless you stay engrafted in me. If a person does not dwell in me, he is thrown out like a broken off branch and withers. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire and they are burned. If you live in me, abide vitally united to me, and my words remain in you, and you continue to live in your hearts, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. When you bear, produce much fruit, my Father is honored and glorified, and you show and prove yourself, prove yourself to be true followers of mine. I have loved you just as the Father has loved me, abide in my love continue in his love with me yeah how nice is this and if you keep my commandments continue to obey my instructions you will abide in my love and live on in it just as i have obeyed my father's commandments and live on in his love you hear that i mean why is it that we would think that we are any different than the one we serve and who loves us completely He's saying it there. Obey me, abide in my love, and live on in it just as I have obeyed my Father's commandments. So it's good for Jesus, not good for us. Thanks for, for coming. Thanks. I've got what I need and I'll catch you later. It's not going to work. I have told you these things that my joy and delight may be in you and that your joy and gladness may be full measure, of full measure and complete and overflowing. And then the, the final comma to it all. So we're getting grafted into the vine, the vine of Jesus Christ. The Father tends to Jesus, the vine, as he attends to us. 
And then if we spend time connected to each other, then we're going to have complete full measure, overflowing with joy and gladness. And then he says in verse 12, this is my commandment. That you love one another just as I have loved you. There you go. And we engrafted in the vine. And being engrafted in him, being loved by him, and the Father, I love you. I'm patient with you, kind, not self-seeking, hold no records of wrongs, always look for the good in you, and always tell the truth. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this very vivid, vivid picture of a father tending to his son. And Father, how we are connected into that union, into that relationship. We are actually part of it. That Father, you tend to your son and you tend to us connected within him. Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your loving kindness, your goodness, your forgiveness. Thank you for all that you've done in our lives. Thank you for what you're about to do. And thank you for what you do today. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen.